Over the past months, we've had quite a bit of construction going on here on our property. If you're not familiar with the project, I thought it would be appropriate in light of the gospel to uh, give a little bit of an update today on where we are at with the construction project. You may remember that the plans were for a field and the funds were raised back in 2009. And I'm very grateful and thank you, want to say thank you for your generosity to the Alive in Christ campaign, which has helped to make this a reality. And really, it is the opportunity for us to utilize the property, which is in the rear or behind the church here. And how is it that we could develop that piece of property? And the determination was made for it to be, once again, a track and field and for some community gathering space. As with many projects, timing is always very critical. And in this particular project, there was a lot of work that had to be done, a lot of engineering in order to make sure that it would be carried out properly. A lot of people have asked me, Father, how come it seems like it's taking so long for the field to be built? And I say, well, it's because it's really kind of technical, actually. We want to make sure that it's totally level because we would not want a track meet and going uphill and downhill. That wouldn't really make a lot of sense, especially here in Florida. But really the property in general, our property slopes downward as you go towards the west. And so it was quite a feat to be able to make sure that it was level. It sits very beautifully there. If you stand during the day near the grotto and you look down towards the west, you'll see this beautiful flat parcel. It really opens up our parish campus You'll be able to see the school now and kind of bring more of a unity to the campus. Part of the project also was to make the winding roads a little straighter. The road that connected the north parking lot and the south parking lot used to have to kind of go around and wind around the church. So the moment that road is closed down, soon, I'm not sure if it'll be before Christmas or not, but the connector road will be a little further to the west creating a very beautiful park-like area immediately behind the church. And then the connector road will go right from a four-way stop by the gymnasium and take you to the Life Center. This will be kind of a, a much better road and tra system and traffic flow around the property. The part of the project, which is to redo this south area here, is probably going to happen after Christmas. We were a little afraid to get too much into it before Christmas lest we wouldn't have access from that parking lot here to the church for four o'clock mass, for instance, on Christmas Eve. And you, instead of getting here at two o'clock, you might have to get here at 10 o'clock, and some people might want to do that anyway. So, But it will be a much better uh, area here for a drop-off. When you come in at the entrance right here by the church, you'll be directed into the south parking lot automatically, and then have an opportunity for a circle to enter to drop off for the handicapped and Maybe one day we'll have a covered area there as well for inclement weather. So things are progressing. One of the elements of the project that is very important also was for some community gathering space. And so you may have noticed in the last week a, a building has appeared back there. It's a modular building. And it's uh, quite large, actually. I believe over 2,000 square feet. And it's going to be used for activities that previously had been held in uh, the fireplace room and also in what was the youth center previously down at the end of Vagabond Way. It was always kind of hidden back there. So it'll be really wonderful to have uh, youth activities right, right here in the center of the campus, very, very near here, the church and the tabernacle, the gymnasium, and obviously the track and field. I was kind of thinking about what we could call the modular. You know, in, in uh, sacred scriptures in the book of Genesis, when God created the world and he made Adam and Eve, he gave them the opportunity to be able to name things. So I think it's important that we do name things and we give them sort of a, a spiritual type of sense. So we're going to be uh, hopefully naming that Padre Pio's Place. It'll be a little building, Padre Pio's Place. And you may be familiar with the statue of Padre Pio, which is over in front of the Life Center. Padre Pio used to be able to buy locate well, we're not going to bi-locate him, we're going to relocate him over there to, to over in front of uh, the new building that is there. And also, you know, he has a, a great appeal. Uh, Padre Pio is a patron of healing, 
And we'll be able to use that building for many things, obviously for youth activities, for other community events. One thing that we're very excited about is that we're going to be able to uh, start, and we already have started over in the Life Center, but that building will present a great opportunity to have uh, luncheons after funerals, something many people like to do after the funeral to immediately have the opportunity for fellowship, and we can provide the space for it. Um, food is something uh, people usually want to bring their own food in, so we'll allow that to, uh, to be the case, but it'll be kind of a, a good place for that to be. And I'm excited because that statue over in front of the Life Center, it's almost like he's like lurking there out in front of the main doors, and I've gotten kind of frightened a few times at night. You know, when you're by yourself, there's kind of no definition there to him. So I actually have an idea that maybe in this area back here we could make a nice, around the park area there, a little walk of saints, or perhaps a little rosary walk or something. Eventually, eventually all things can, can happen. Maybe a, a statue of Blessed John Paul or Blessed Mother Teresa as well to really reflect upon the modern day saints. Projects should be finished in late January or early February. As always with construction, we have to give it a couple of extra weeks potentially. And we'll be very happy, hoping to um, even use the field in May. We're looking at a date for the possibility of a, a community event, a parish picnic in the back there and using our parish campus in a nice way. So it will be something to look forward to and open up uh, new, new opportunities for us here at Annunciation. So that's kind of a, an update on the track and field. If you have any questions, please never hesitate to ask. I'd be more than happy to speak to you about it, let you know more about it, and uh, continue to give you updates. Visit the website. There's some great pictures and some video, too, on there about the, with the construction and how things are coming about. Our gospel reading today and also our first reading speak about construction. The gospel reading and the first reading speak about the construction not of a building, well, maybe kind of a temple. Rather, it's the temple of the person. And it is the construction of the human heart. And how is it that we receive the presence of God? Baruch wrote at a time period which was about five or six hundred years before the birth of Jesus Christ. And he was writing to a group of people who were in exile. They were refugees. They were away from their homeland in Babylon, and they had a desire to return. They wanted to go back home, but they were oppressed there. And so Baruch is giving them hope, hope for a new day in Jerusalem, for a reconstruction of sorts, for the day when Jerusalem would have a heart that would be welcome and open to their return. Also to give them a sense of trusting in God, of being able to make sure that he would make a way for them to be led there, to make a path for them, to arrive there back in their homeland. Really, for each one of us, we really are exiles and refugees also. Yes, we live here in this country, this may be our home, but we're exiles and we're refugees of heaven. Because when God placed us here in this world, we have a desire to return to him. And each one of us, our soul, wants to return one day to God. That, that's really what is deep inside of us. There was a time when maybe we had ancestors that came to this country. They were refugees. They were immigrants that came here. And many people always talked about the homeland and about how great it was there and about how wonderful it was. I know, you know my own family would have come here to this country in search of a new life from Slovakia, which is known as today, or from England, and and had the chance to come here to this country and really have a new start. Well, for each one of us, we have really a homeland too, and that's heaven. It's where God really wants us to be. The gospel reading tonight is from Luke, and it talks about, and first of all starts out with a pretty heavy history lesson. And it's proof, when we hear these names that we do not understand, probably that we've never heard of before. You know, in places maybe that we've never heard of before. They're ancient places. But Luke is really what giving us the chance to see that Christ and the Messiah was born into human history. Jesus was just, the story of Jesus wasn't something that was fabricated. But when Luke was writing around the year 80, so it was about 50 years after the resurrection. 
people were beginning to wonder. They may not have known Jesus or the apostles personally. So Luke is saying, well, I'm going to give you proof that this happened by telling you who was in charge at the time, by giving the names of the tetrarchs and the names of the high priest of the time. They would have remembered those leaders. So he's saying that, you know, at this particular time, I'm telling you a story about what happened years ago. And he's reflecting back and paraphrasing the prophet Isaiah. Prophet Isaiah, who was saying, someone great is going to come. Someone great is going to come. And people thought John the Baptist was maybe that great person. John the Baptist was kind of an odd figure, actually. John was probably somebody that we would not have been attracted to. His dress was a little odd. His diet, he ate bugs. He ate locusts. That was kind of his, what he liked to do, and a little bit on the eccentric side. We probably wouldn't have been attracted to him. We probably would have run from him, actually. But people at that time were attracted to him. They thought that he was a pretty interesting person. He had good words. And he's saying, next week's gospel, we'll hear again from him, that he's not the one to come, but in a humble way, he says, there's a greater one still yet. So today, as we hear John the Baptist talking about Isaiah, he's saying to the people, prepare your heart. Make the valley higher and the mountains lower. You know, the word of God is really amazing, my friends. Just think about it for a moment. When I look at a mountain, I've never thought of a mountain of being cutting off the top and smoothing it out. Or taking the valley and bringing thousands of truckloads of dirt in in order to make it level and to bring it up. Only God could think of these things, folks. Only God can do that. And so the great imagination of God really teaches us and expands our own imagination. So tonight when we hear this scripture, it's a chance to look into our imagination. To think as we celebrate this season of Advent, which is a coming, a waiting for the coming of Christ, an anticipation. It's a time when we are called upon to think of how is it that God is asking us to prepare our own heart, to make room for him. Yes, this Christmas. Yes, in this Eucharist. But yes, one day when he comes knocking on our door and he asks us to come home to our native land, and that is the kingdom of heaven, where he really wants each one of us to be. And so during this season of Advent, how is it that we go about that? Well, I hope that one thing that we're all doing is taking the chance to read the booklet that you received in the mail. We, we sent over 3,800 of them out. I, I hope that you've taken the chance to look through it, and maybe some of the days will touch your heart. They're short little reflections. They take about two minutes to read. Some of the days may touch your heart. Maybe some of the days are a little bit more challenging, and maybe it doesn't exactly speak to you, but I know in the 30 days or so that are written in there, something will speak to you. So take the time to pray about how your spiritual life is undergoing conversion. During this Advent season, also it's a chance for us to go to confession, to be reminded of going to confession, and the beautiful sacrament of reconciliation. Someone might say, well, Father, it's been years since I've gone. I don't remember how to go. Well, I'm inviting you to come, to look up some resources. We can give you some resources. Please don't worry about how long it's been since you've gone. But make some plans to go between now and Christmas, either Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock, or you can come on Saturday at 3 o'clock, make an appointment with one of us, or December 20th. It's a Thursday evening. Pretty late, just right before Christmas, we'll have our reconciliation service. So make plans to attend that evening. We'll have some extra priests here. Sometimes people say, well, how do I know who to go to? How do I find a good confessor? And, you know, how do I know who a good confessor would be? I asked that question of a priest one time. I said, who should I go to confession to? Who would be good? He said, someone who doesn't understand English. <laughs> well, I'm not really quite sure if that would be good for my spiritual life or not, though, because I, we really wouldn't communicate very well. You know, I'd say, well, I don't want to go to somebody who I know. You know, Father, I wouldn't go to you in confession. Well, there's a seal of confession, and through the grace of ordination, we, we don't remember the confession. I assure you, I'm not looking at you as the person. It's 
rather trying to really look into your heart. And there's a grace that we, we, we leave it behind in that confessional. I don't remember it. I don't know how it is. I don't remember what the sins are afterward. I, I'm there and present in that particular time. And I know it's not easy to go to confession. And I know it's not easy sometimes to go to somebody even that you know. I can tell you, I, I appreciate that. I often, I will go down to the shrine for confession. And you know, one day I went in, I said, oh great, this is a, must be a new priest or visiting. Isn't this wonderful? He won't know me or whatnot. And you know, so I walk in and what's the first thing he says to me? So how is your brother doing? <laughs> well, needless to say, it was a good confession though, because when someone knows you, they, they know who you are. They, they know something about you and there's familiarity and Let's face it, the soul is pretty personal. When we have a relationship, it's, it's kind of nice to be able to partner in that, to work through the gift of joy and of reconciliation. So there's just two really practical things that we can do in order to prepare for during this Advent season and reconstruct our hearts. Maybe get over some of the peaks and the valleys and find God on the level plane. Not just in the highs and the lows of life. These great saints of Advent, two of them in particular, Mary, who we celebrated yesterday, and John the Baptist, who we remember today and next week again, they really were heralds of the gospel. They, they were prophets. They, they, they said words that was very important. It was giving out news. Giving out news of uh, things that were, was of interest to people. And you know, something else we can do during Advent is to think of how we can be prophetic. How is it that we can be a herald, an announcer of the good news of the gospel? Who do we share the message of the Lord with? Is there anyone that we share our spiritual life with or that we can invite even to be a part of our own faith tradition? Reaching out to others, inviting them to come in, inviting them to be a, a part of the faith and of community and of family. Maybe especially to someone who's been away from the church. Christmas is a, a wonderful time to invite and to be able to bring them forward and to say, you know what, why don't you come home? Come home for the holidays. So tonight as we hear these scripture readings, it's our chance to plan to see how it is that God is calling us to make room for him. What, what reconstruction needs to happen between now and Christmas for us to have really a personal and deeper relationship with the Lord? A relationship maybe that is like no other relationship that we have. A relationship where we listen to him, where we know that he's speaking to us, we're confident and we trust in him. A relationship where we look forward to seeing him one day when he calls us home out of darkness into his light. When he calls us home to be citizens of the kingdom of heaven. <laughs>